Okay, this video is going to go over the five remaining trig values. So basically what's going to happen is they're going to give you the ratio of like a, a trig function, like cosecant equals seven thirds. Um, and then they're also going to tell you that this other trig function is positive or is negative. So the first thing you need to know is which trig functions are positive based on which quadrant you're in, because you're going to have to take this information and identify which quadrant, one, two, three, or four, this triangle is located in. So here's how you do this. I tell my kids to remember all students take calculus. All students take calculus because if you can remember that these are the only trig functions that are positive in that quadrant like quadrant three tan is the only positive one quadrant two sine is the only positive one quadrant four cosine is the only positive one which means like in quadrant two sine is positive so cosine has to be negative tan has to be negative quadrant three tan is positive so cosine has to be negative sine has to be negative Quadrant four, cosine is positive, so sine has to be negative, tan has to be negative. And in quadrant one, everything is positive. So that's where I'd start. If you don't know this right here, you're really going to struggle with the five remaining trig values. So let's look at this first one. They tell me cosine, first of all, is negative. So I know that this cannot be quadrants one or two. I mean, sorry, quadrants one or four. Cosine being negative means it has to be quadrants two or three. Now, to narrow it down even further, they tell me tan is positive. Well, in quadrant two, tan is negative, so it cannot be there. So this has to be a triangle in quadrant three. Now, them telling me cosine is negative three over five tells me my R, sorry, tells me my x over my r. And so I know that my x is negative three. I know my r is five. Now I just run Pythagorean theorem to find out what my y value is here. So it looked like this. It would look like negative three squared plus that y value squared has to equal r squared, so five squared. So that's nine plus y squared equals 25. Subtract 9, now you have y squared equal to 16, so y has to be 4. You should have already known that because this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. It's one of the most common ones, but that's okay. Now, just because I know y is 4, it's really y is plus or minus 4. It could be either of those things. And the reason that's important is because y is not 4 y is negative here it's negative four because think about if you had a coordinate here it would have a negative x value and a negative y value so now that i know my x my y and my r i can just use that sig uh, six trig function kind of like last video and just plug them in so cosine is they already gave me that negative three fifths Sine is y over r, which would be negative 4 over 5. Tan is y over x, which is negative 4 over negative 3, which turns into be positive 4 thirds. And then for these three, you just flip it. So secant is cosine flip, so that's negative 5 thirds. Cosecant is sine flip, so negative 5 fourths. Then cotangent is tangent flip, so 3 fourths. And that's how you do these. So this next one, they tell me tan is a negative. By them telling me tan is negative, I know it cannot be quadrants one or three. So to narrow it down, they tell me cosine is also positive. Well, in quadrant two, cosine is negative. So that means it has to be here in quadrant four. So I draw my bow tie triangle. Now them telling me tan, they are telling me the y over the x. So I know that my x value is positive 8. I know my y value is negative 1. I don't care that my triangle is not really to scale. Now you have to use Pythagorean theorem to go get this r value. So it would look like 8 squared plus negative 1 squared 
is r squared. So that's 64 plus 1 is r squared. So r is plus minus root 65. Now, one thing to remember, r is always positive. So that means this r value right here is positive root 65. All right, now that I know my x, my y, and my r, I can just plug them into my six trig functions. So cosine is x over r, which is 8 over root 65. Sine is y over r, so negative 1 over root 65. Tan is y over x, so negative 1 over 8. They already gave me that one at the beginning. Secant is cosine flipped, so root 65 over 8. Cosecant is sine flipped, so root 65 over negative 1. So I'm just going to call this negative root 65. You can put it over 1 if you want. It doesn't matter, but it's just negative root 65. Then cotangent is tangent flipped, so that's negative 8 over 1 or just negative 8, like that. All right, this last one. They tell me cosecant is positive. Cosecant's the opposite of sine. So if cosecant is positive, sine is positive. So I know it cannot be quadrants 3 or 4 right off the bat because sine is negative in those quadrants. Now to narrow it down, they tell me cosine is negative. Well, in quadrant 1, cosine is positive. So that means this triangle has to be in quadrant 2. So I go ahead and draw my bow tie triangle. All right, cosecant is sine flipped. So if sine is y over r, that means cosecant is r over y. So I know my r has to be seven. I know my y has to be three. Now I have to go find my x by using Pythagorean theorem. So that's going to look like this. 3 squared plus that x squared has to equal 7 squared, my r squared. So that's 9 plus x squared equals 49. Subtract 9, now I have x squared equals 40. Root it, so I get x equals plus minus root 40. Root 40 breaks down. That's 2 root 10. So this is really x equals plus minus 2 root 10. Now I have to figure out if it's positive or negative. If you think about this coordinate, this coordinate would have a negative x value with a positive y value. So my x is negative 2 root 10. Now that I have my x, my y, and my r, I'm just going to go plug them into my six trig functions. Cosine is x over r, so that's negative 2 root 10 over 7. Sine is y over r, so that's 3 over 7. Tan is y over x, so that's 3 over negative 2 root 10. So negative 3 over positive 2 root 10, same thing. Remember, it's good practice to put your negative on the top of your fraction. That's why I wrote it like negative 3 over positive 2 root 10. All right, secant, just go flip cosine. So that's 7 over negative 2 root 10. Same thing regarding the negative sign. I put it at the top of my fraction. Cosecant is sine flipped. So that is 7 over 3. But we already knew that because that's the one they gave us. And then tan, I mean cotan is just tan flipped. So that's 2 root 10 over negative 3, or just negative 2 root 10 over positive 3. So I would say the hardest part is finding out which quadrant you're in, whether it's 1, 2, 3, 4. You really have to know this right here. And then after that, just when you solve Pythagorean theorem, don't assume that it's going to be positive. It could be the negative version of that as well. You really have to think about like if you had a coordinate there, if that coordinate would have like a negative x, positive y kind of thing. R is always positive. And then just use your six trig functions to get all the remaining ones. Hope this video helped.